So good evening. And I feel like I stand between you and the good stuff, the awards and dessert. Uh, but thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Uh, it's an honor to be here on a night where we celebrate amazing people, people I've had a chance to work with, uh, General Alexander and, and Tony Scott. Um, I want to thank ICIT for what you do. You bring together a community of public and private, of people from all over the community, different perspectives of cybersecurity. Um, I know that most of it's work, but I'm seeing the fun. Um, but cybersecurity is a people problem. It's not a computer problem. People teach computers, and you're bringing together the right minds to do that. So we thank you very much. Thank you to the sponsors that make events like this happen, that bring, again, our great minds together. And from my perspective at, at Homeland Security, have also helped to bring public and private together. I'll share a very brief story. Some of you who know me have heard this story, but when I ran the public-private partnership uh, as a volunteer for many years for the FBI, one thing I had to do every year was brief about 84 different FBI agents from around the country, the field offices, on our progress, because the organization was 33,000 people. We grew it from about 2,000. And one year, we all flew back on pretty much the same flight that went through Atlanta, and the gate agent took all of their tickets. This was only about 10, 12 years ago, but she had a little yellow card because they bring things onto the plane that I don't. And it was one agent after the next with the card. And when they got to me, the gate agent said to the agent in front of me, uh, will you be transporting the prisoner all the way to Atlanta? <laughs> Can't. He's a very good friend, but he didn't say no right away. It was, yeah. Uh, and emails go back and forth now so for actual official business. And at the bottom, sometimes he'll write something about transporting. Yeah. Um, so that 10, 12 years ago was what people thought was public-private partnership, as in it's not there. How could this one woman who isn't an agent be traveling with all these people unless she's in captivity? Um, so we're hoping to change that, and, and you all are doing that, and I thank you. Um, I took my role, as was mentioned, about three years ago. Uh, came in from private sector, and uh, everybody, there are a couple of folks in the audience who knew me then, who joked with me at my going away party, Godspeed, what are you doing? <laughs> I walked on to lead a team of 2,000 of the finest scientists I've ever met. Um, these are amazing people. 48 hours ago, we were all in the war room. Some of them had been in there for 22 hours, making sure that nothing, no shenanigans, were going to undermine public confidence of that election. Um, that's the dedication. I'll come back to that in a few moments. Our job in the operations part, we live in an organization called the National Protection and Programs Directorate within the Department of Homeland Security, or NPPD for short. The name tells you nothing of what we do. Uh, but we, we're trying to fix that. Many of you know that. We're looking at, we're really cyber and uh, cybersecurity infrastructure protection is what we do. This is actually uh, critical infrastructure protection uh, and resilience month. And last month was cybersecurity month. We're not trying to reinvent the calendar. We're trying to bring these things together. And within that organization, we have the cyber ops, the infrastructure protection ops, the federal protective service, the men and women that protect uh, about 10,000 federal facilities across this country. They see not only the people coming in and out of federal facilities, they know who owns the router in the closet that's controlling the IP cameras, the air conditioning, and the blinds. So as we go forward, looking at everything we live and breathe, if you can't eat it, it's lit up. It has a processor. It is communicating. As many people saw a couple of weeks ago with the denial, denial of service attacks, they can use those now, those lit up objects. We call them Internet of Things. But really what it means is we've got computing logic, which is great. Your computers are faster than we ever believed, so fast that if we were to make them faster, they'd melt. So now we're dealing with material science engineers. Your bandwidth, your speed of getting traffic from point A to point B is ridiculous, and the bad guy's using it. So our job is to work as a community to understand how do things really work? How do we bring cyber and physical together? And that's why I think these opportunities are so important, because everybody here has a different perspective. Um, how many people here, just so I know, are from government? Thank you so much for your service. Uh, that's a hard job, especially in our <laughs> Just talk for a few moments about the special people that are being honored tonight. You know, first of all, I didn't get to know Tony Scott until he came to government, but Tony, you have just such a way of talking. You can calm the savage beast. Um, <laughs> both private sector and government, and dealing with uh, OPM, I remember those press calls. That was tough. That was something that, yes, on the DHS side, they were making DHS recommended mitigations to that, that network when they found this event. And we went back through our programs through old traffic and, and found out where else they'd been, and we discovered Department of Interior. But it's not easy to tell 
the American public that that much information was lost and to talk to the press and you did it in such a way that brought out the technology piece and the right thing to do all at once and it was amazing. So thank you for that. When we talk about our cyber vision on which I, bri I uh, briefed Secretary Johnson when he first came to the department, uh, I said I want a self-healing network. To me, computers are not smart, they're just fast. They execute instructions one by one and they have no idea what they're doing. They just pull it off of memory. If it's there, they run it. It's ridiculous and they run it at speed. Uh, so the adversary that has no lawyers and plenty of cash puts their instruction there. They execute with an agility we'll never know uh, and they got us. So how do we fix that? We teach computers not to run it. Your body has a set of vaccines, just like we have signatures, uh, but beyond that, and you need it. You want your measles vaccine. It's 100 years old, but you need it. Uh, but you want to go to that immune system now. You want to start to understand what is an instruction I shouldn't run and why, or at least detect it. That's resilience and say, I ran an instruction I shouldn't have run. Let's fix that. Let's tell everybody else what it was so they won't do it. See something and say something. See something, say something at light speed. And I remember back in private sector working with General Alexander in many meetings where uh, your thoughts helped companies get together to pioneer a lot of this high-speed information sharing. And that was the basis of what we're doing now in bringing together. So you get a cold, your body's not vaccinated against the cold, your body can't have a conference call or civets to fight the cold. Uh, we are trying to do with computer information, math, what your body does biologically. And so a lot of that work comes from the meetings that you held, getting companies to transcend competition, much like ICIT does, um, getting us all in a room and putting that together. And that was, we're not that old, but that was five, six years ago. Uh, but that is the basis, a lot of what we're doing today. And so we dream of a network that recognizes not to run something and can tell somebody something. And part of what we're doing at DHS is the very, very beginning. But you may have heard of this automated indicator sharing. That's a Klingon word for, we've got the rack room, that holds all the indicators. This is not private information. We work very hard with our private sector and privacy experts and civil liberties experts to make sure we get a lot of data, but only the data we should have and not the data we shouldn't. And we put it together and we make a weather map. And we put these indicators of cyber threat together so that we can paint a better picture and push it out as quickly as we can to the private sector. We work with our partners in the FBI and the intelligence community to get things declassified. Uh, we've never had a better partnership, I believe, with the NSA than what we've had uh, through your work, General Alexander, and through others to help us declassify more and to help us get it right. It's tight. Um, I, can, I can wind this back to as we bring people together and machines together, having the best perspectives together, and that's all of you in many different ways you bring it together. The electronics will help solve things at light speed, but what that'll do is bring out the most egregious events and just make them more visible. And that's where we need you. The computers can't solve this by themselves. So as we go forward, we have more of a self-healing network, but we also need a community like this uh, that comes together. I'll end on just the scene that I saw uh, in our room, in our war room. And it comes back to the three things we're celebrating tonight. This great community, um, our two award winners, and also to make a comment about General Tuhill that was mentioned before. Uh, I hired him when I came in. I worked hard at it. It took seven months. Somebody's got to explain that to me. He's an Air Force general. So we're working a lot on how we, how we streamline <laughs> government hiring. Um, and we've gotten help from the Hill to pay cyber experts more to make those processes faster. The White House has helped us a great deal. I don't think it would take seven months today. Uh, but General Greg Tuhill brought a ton of great leadership and humor to our team. Uh, and he was a friend. And he's also told me several times, I will be forever your wingman. So you can tell him tonight that I embarrassed the heck out of him. Um, uh, but in that war room the other night, and it wasn't just the 20 pizzas that we brought in. And for those of you who are come from this community, that was, looked like the world's largest lock bag. It had a big zipper on it and a zipper compartment on the inside out of which Domino's produced my 20 pizzas. <laughs> but we had probably on and off 50 to 60 people on duty at all times. We had an open conference line to the FBI and the intelligence community. We had conference calls every three hours with everybody involved in the interagency. And then we had another one an hour later to brief everybody else. Uh, we had uh, constantly, if something happened, we knew about it. If something came up on the news, we knew about it. We verified it, we talked about it, we put it out. And those guys didn't quit. And that went on all through the night. And that kind of dedication is what's in your Department of Homeland Security. Um, I want people to know that because they don't always see it. This will continue through the transition. 
this will continue into the next administration. The dedication that's there that's been built from your work and others and support from this administration and many before it, uh, that will continue. And we will continue to hire more and more great people and bring in great skill sets. Um, but I do want to thank you all for everything you put into that. I want to embarrass, I don't know where she is, but Hala First is here from the department. There you are. So Hala works very closely with our private sector office to engage companies in innovation. We've worked very hard to bring private sector folks in. To me, you're all our customers, and if I don't get to know you and the team doesn't get to know you, we're not helping you. Um, we're all about customer service. Uh, but thank you very much for your time. Thank you for being here tonight. Thanks for what you do in cyber. And we're the government. We're here to help.